So you need to create and export some reports in your Next.js application. Let's talk about it. Hello and welcome, I'm Dave. Today we'll look at how to create Microsoft Excel files and other data file formats for reports with Next.js. And I'll provide links to all resources in the description below. I'll also provide a link for you to join my Discord server where you can discuss web development with other students and you can ask questions that I can answer and receive help from other viewers too. I look forward to seeing you there. Almost without fail, when you're building a business application, one of the features you'll need to add is the ability to create and export reports. The most requested file format for these reports is usually Microsoft Excel, but oftentimes also a CSV file, which means comma separated values, and a couple of other file formats. Let's look at how we can make this happen in Next.js. Just a quick run through of today's demo application, you can see I've got a web page here that lists out three tables, to-dos, users, and books, and the different type of file formats that can be exported for the data. Actually, the first three are files, and the last two are data formats that we'll just show in the browser. So for example, if I click JSON, I'm going to see the to-do JSON here in the browser. I should mention right now that Firefox is better at displaying JSON than Chrome, and I'm using Chrome right here. Also, a simple HTML table, if I click that, here is the table of the to-dos. But if I want to export, say, a text file, and this is tab delimited, I could click this, and you can see it downloads it up here. Uh, another one, CSV, and it downloaded as well. And here is the XLSX, which is the Microsoft Excel format. So I've downloaded all of those. Let's take a quick look. I'll click on the downloads and just click this uh, text file. Let's open that. And here you can see the text. It is tab delimited. And I've got all the data in quotes, tab spaces between. If we do the same with CSV, I'm not sure if it will open there or I'll need to open it with my notepad. Here I'll, I guess I downloaded it again. And it, it opened it in uh, VS Code. So there we go. And I've got the same data and now it's comma separated and it's still got quotes around all of that. I'll come back to VS Code in a moment. And now I don't have Excel installed on my computer and that's because through work I use the Office 365 and it's online. So let me show you the Excel file. And here's the Excel file that I downloaded. So it's the same information, but in the Excel format. And this is just in the browser because it's through my Office 365. But just wanted to show you that all of those file formats do work and it produces all the data. So now let's see how we do this in VS Code with Next.js. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying the video. You may be surprised to learn that three out of every four viewers, nearly 75% of all people who watch my channel aren't subscribed. So I just wanted to take a quick second and remind you to hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. And if you really like my videos, you can get exclusive content and support my channel even more by joining my Patreon at patreon.com slash Dave Gray. Thanks for your consideration. And now back to the video. All right, I'm in VS Code and I've got an example Next.js project started here. And I'm in the default page.tsx file that you see up here at the top as well. And now let's look at this component just quickly. First of all, before you would have anybody export a report or a full table or anything from your application, of course you would check the auth and permissions for that export page. So just a couple of notes here, essentially pseudocode, letting you know the logic flow that I would do. After that, for my example, where I'm exporting all of the table, like a complete table export, you would probably want to request all of the table names from your database. And I'm including this here. I'll put a line right there where here's the SQL statement. You could run this in MySQL, for example, and get all of the table names in your database, your database side of this query. So just keeping that in the comments as an example for you. And then I've got a table export row component right here, and then you would pass in the table name. So if you requested all of those from your database, for example, you could loop through and just use this component once. I've just put it in here three times to show the different examples. So that's what that's about essentially, and that's what you saw on the page. So from here, we need to look at this table export row component. So I'll go over here to my components directory, and let's pull this up. So 
Right now, you can see we're passing in the table name, but this could easily be a report name because it's just however you query the data and whatever you bring back to your Next.js application from your database, then that's what you can, of course, export in the different file formats. So below is what you saw on the page. So I had the table name, and after that, I had the different links to the different file formats. Now here's something important. It is that I'm linking to an API route, a route handler in Next.js. Now, many times I have said from a server component, you would not send a request to a route handler. You can just request data directly from the database. And while that is true, this is the one instance or one of the few instances where you actually do want to use a route handler because I want to stay on this page in my Next.js application. Like when you saw that I clicked on the text export or the CSV export, I stayed on that page and this is rendered by the server. It's not a client component and, and that's where I want to stay. However, I want the route handler to deliver the file type and it goes straight to my downloads. So this is a great example of one of the few times you would actually have a link in a server component that goes to a API route, a route handler in Next.js. And of course, with the API route, we need to consider the app router and how the route is played out in our URL so we know what to put. And here we have API slash tables slash, and then I'm putting in the name of the table in lower case here. Of course, converting that up here. So it doesn't really matter what comes into the component. It could be a mix of uppercase and lowercase, but I convert it all to lowercase. And I'm putting that in as part of the URL. So it's going to be a dynamic URL to our route handler. And we'll look at that in the file tree in just a moment. But I also want to highlight that I'm putting a param here at the end. And this is the format of what type of export I want. But you might also want to include a second param, perhaps a report name or something else that helps your logic for what you're trying to generate in the route handler that will be downloaded. So you could include more information is what I'm saying. Now quickly, let's look in the file tree as well. And we can see we have the API directory and inside of that, the tables directory, and that matches our URL over here, API tables. And then we have the dynamic section of that URL. And that's where our lowercase table value goes. And this is the dynamic part. And then we have our route.ts, and this is our route handler. Now at the top of the route handler, you see I'm importing in the type next request. And also I'm using a package called XLSX. Now I wanna go over how I'm importing this dependency because this is key here. You could use the wrong dependency if you don't know this information. We're on the NPM website and I just wanna highlight this XLSX package that is on the NPM registry is not the one you want to choose. It is two years old and it is version 18.5. The project has moved away from the NPM registry. So this is old, you don't want it, and there is a high severity vulnerability to it as well, which we can verify on socket.dev, a very useful website for checking your NPM packages. And you can see that vulnerability listed right here, which you'll also see, I believe, if you attempt to install this old version into your Next.js project. So you don't want that. Let's look at what you do want. And we're at sheetjs.com, which is the name for this project, this XLSX dependency. And we're going to use the community edition. So we just wanna click the documentation for that. And then we can click get started. From there, we wanna to go to installation and we want frameworks and bundlers since we're using Next.js. Now, since this is just a example project, I'm using this right here, npmi with the dash dash save, and you can see the URL here for the tarball, and copy that and install that into my project, or if you're making this example project or something like it. But what you really want, and by the way, it does discuss that vulnerability and how they handled it, and now they're on version 20.1, not 18.5. But if we scroll down further past all of that discussion, there's also this vendoring section here. This is what you would want for a production application where you actually download the file and reference it that way instead of using the URL that you see up here under installation. But this is what I'm using. Now, if I come back to VS Code, let me pull that up. 
we look at package JSON after I've installed it. And this is what you should have if you want yours to look like mine for this example project where it has this inside of the package JSON. And that's if you follow those ins installation directions. And I'm linking to those in the video description as well. And now that you've got the correct version of XLSX installed, let's go ahead and review that route handler, which is the final piece. So at the top now, after we've imported what we need, this third and final import that you see here is just for this tutorial because I'm loading in a JSON file instead of actually requesting data from a database. But that is probably what you would do, and you likely don't need this right here. So now let's look at the route handler itself, and we've got the get request coming in, and then it receives a table name as a string. Once again, this could be a report name or whatever you are sending to identify the data you need. Also the search params. If you remember, I was sending the format, so I'm getting those search params here, then getting that format value. Maybe you would get a report name there. It's however you want to send that really. From there, I'm getting the table from the params, and then I'm checking just to make sure that a table was sent. And if not, I'm throwing an error here inside the try catch blocks. After that, I've just got some pseudocode steps here for you because your logic could vary depending on what you need. But here, what I recommend is get all the table names from the database if you are doing what I'm doing here, and that's exporting a full table. Oh, and by the way, speaking of pseudocode, up here, reminder to check auth and permissions because this is probably an internal app where you are getting data and exporting it. So after you do that, you want to get the table names if you're doing what I'm doing. If you're building a report, maybe you don't need to get those, but I get all the table names and then I find the table name that matches the param. So I wanna make sure that table name exists. And if it doesn't exist, I'm throwing an error. But if it does exist and it matches in there, then I want to get the table name that I actually requested from the database. So it's the, the correct table name as far as the proper case goes. The, the name may have matched in all lowercase, but I wanna use the exact table name with the exact case it uses. Now from there, I'm going to query the table data. Oh, and by the way, just for this tutorial, I just went ahead and assigned the table name here to so then in step five, I'm querying the table data from the database, so I would get all of that data. And in this example, once again, I'm just importing in some JSON from a file. So this is the static data. You probably would not need this here, but this is what imports that JSON file. Okay, I'm console logging the JSON file just to make sure we've got it. And then after that, this is where we get to the XLSX dependency and how to use it. So before I get to any conditional logic, if you're providing different file formats, I create a worksheet, not a workbook, but a worksheet. And we do that with the JSON to sheet method from xlsx.utils. And we call that JSON to sheet method and pass in an array of JSON data. Then I get to the conditional logic. So if the format is a CSV, you can see I'm using once again a method from xlsx.utils and then this is sheet to CSV and I pass in the worksheet and I've also added the option force quotes true. So I'm wrapping each piece of data from each column in quotes. And then the response here, this is important for all the different types we send because they have different types that they actually send with each file. So we return a new response this is the CSV that we created above. The status is 200. The headers are key. I'm going to press Alt-Z so this wraps down. So we can see content disposition. It's an attachment and we provide the file name. So I'm providing the table name and then I say CSV because this is a CSV file and the content type is text slash CSV. Now the next one is very similar because it is a text format. And so I use sheet to text method instead of sheet to CSV. And then the response, I'm once again doing the same content disposition and then we're just naming it as a text file. But then notice the content type here is still text slash CSV. That's because this is tab delimited. So really TSV, tab separated values, but you typically see that served as a text file. 
and it's often imported like a CSV would be, say, in Excel, if you were to import the file. So text slash CSV is appropriate here. After that, we get to the Excel worksheet or workbook, if you will. So we've got the worksheet above. Now we're going to create an Excel workbook. And you can see that's xlsx.utils.book underscore new. We call that, create that workbook, and then we call book append sheet. And the first param is the workbook. The second is the worksheet that we created above from the JSON data. Then we can name that sheet as it's appended to the workbook. So I've just got a generic name here, my sheet. You might want something else there. After that, we need to create a buffer. Now remember, this is Node.js in this route handler. Route handlers are server components in Next.js. So I'm creating a buffer here with xlsx.write, passing in the workbook, and then saying it's type buffer and the book type is XLSX. So once we've created that buffer, now we're ready to send our response. Pass in the buffer here. Status is 200 again. Content disposition now has the extension XLSX like an Excel file. And the content type is very important here. It's application slash BND dot MS dash XL, as we'd see right there. And then from there, there's a couple other formats. Remember, we had JSON. That's very easy. Just return response.json and pass in our JSON data. And HTML, a very simple HTML table, is created with sheet to HTML. And we pass in the worksheet. And then that content type is sent as text slash HTML. It's not really a download. It's rendered in the browser. So we don't have those other headers that we previously did. So all of this code will be available in my GitHub repository that's linked in the description of this video. I hope this has helped you generate some reports in Next.js. You generate whatever you need with JSON data. Then you can see how the XLSX package helps you render or download whatever type of data you actually need from that route handler. So we go back, I'll pull that up one more time here in the browser. And this is what you should see when you launch this code if you get it from my repository. And of course, we're able to load this server component, click these links, and we stay here on the page, but we get the download that we want from Next.js. Hey guys, I've recently started a Patreon and I wanna give a shout out to my top level member, Holy Coder, who is a progress provider, and also my senior level member, Eldad. You guys are helping me reach my goals. Also, thank you so much to all of the junior level members. And if you're interested in my Patreon, I post exclusive content and early release content there. I really appreciate your support. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection. And a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.